who's really responsible for the ongoing attacks in Mali? Are we merely observing militant groups that thrive in chaos, or could there be a deeper, more calculated force pulling the strings behind the scenes? Mali is once again under siege, and it's becoming clear that pinning the blame on a single group is far too simplistic. The attackers aren't all homegrown either. Some of the most outspoken human rights advocates seem to have a role in this too. So who are these hidden actors stirring up unrest in Mali? Could it be that those who preach peace and democracy are secretly contributing to the chaos? On September 17th, Bamako, Mali's capital, was hit by a string of brutal attacks. Militants launched coordinated assaults on key military bases, claiming 77 lives and shaking the country to its core. This wasn't just an act of rebellion. It was a harsh reminder of the fragility of a nation long troubled by insurgency and political instability. Colonel Asimi Goida, who came to power after two military coups, vowed to restore order, yet these attacks suggest his government is struggling to keep that promise. But what's behind this failure? Could external forces be at play? Several military personnel lost their lives in a training camp in Bamako during these attacks, as the Malian army reported that terrorists attempted to infiltrate their army school. Explosions and gunfire echoed across nearby areas, further shaking the already fragile situation. But it's not just about these attackers someone seems to want Mali, not only under attack but also perceived as incapable of self-defense. Mali's crisis didn't start overnight, though recent years have seen a significant escalation. So who's to blame? Militants, the government, or both? The narrative surrounding Mali's troubles is often told in oversimplified terms, blaming either government incompetence or militant violence. Yet, the true story is far more complex. It's not just about internal failures, it's about the systemic exploitation and interference that has choked Mali for decades. Can we really blame the Malian government or the militants without acknowledging the larger forces at play? Militant groups are typically seen as the obvious culprits, but they are more of a symptom than a cause. These groups thrive in environments where governance has been intentionally weakened and where borders and stability have been manipulated to serve foreign interests. They didn't just appear from nowhere. Their rise follows decades of foreign interference, particularly after the destruction of Libya in 2011, which flooded Mali and neighboring regions with fighters and weapons. Western powers now condemn the rise of armed groups, but they played a significant role in creating the conditions for their emergence. Why? Because chaos creates control. A destabilized Mali, overrun by militants, guarantees that foreign powers, especially France and its Western allies, can keep a firm grip on the country's vast resources, including gold and uranium. A stable, self-sufficient Mali would challenge the economic dominance these powers have enjoyed for too long. So while militants are certainly causing harm, they are pawns in a much larger geopolitical game where Western nations have manipulated instability to their advantage. Mali's government isn't blameless either. The state has struggled with corruption, mismanagement, and political exclusion, especially in its northern and central regions. For years, the government in Bamako has focused more on maintaining power than on addressing the needs of marginalized communities. This neglect has created a vacuum, one that insurgent groups have exploited by offering alternatives to a government perceived as disconnected from its people. But blaming the government alone is an oversimplification. The Malian government has, in many ways, been a puppet of Western powers, especially France, which continued to exert influence long after colonialism officially ended. France's Operation Barkhani, launched under the pretense of combating insurgency, wasn't just about battling militants. It was about securing French access to resources while ensuring Mali's continued dependence on foreign military aid. These security solutions often imposed without local input did nothing to address the root causes of insurgency poverty, marginalization, and exploitation of resources. By focusing on military action while ignoring the need for social and economic reforms, Western interventions have perpetuated the cycle of violence. But the bigger question remains who truly benefits from a destabilized Mali? Certainly not the Malian people. The real winners are those who profit from Mali's resources and strategic position while avoiding accountability for the chaos. Neocolonial forces, 
particularly France, still wield considerable influence. France controls the CFA franc, a currency managed by the French Treasury, ensuring that Mali's economy remains subservient to French interests. Moreover, the IMF and World Bank, dominated by Western powers, have imposed policies that prioritize foreign investment and resource extraction over Mali's domestic growth. When a country's sovereignty is repeatedly undermined, it becomes impossible to build the kind of institutions necessary to combat militancy or corruption effectively. So while militants and the Malian government bear some responsibility, the true blame lies with external forces Western governments, multinational corporations, and financial institutions that have profited from Mali's instability while pretending to be its saviors. Mali's crisis isn't just about bad leaders or violent insurgents. It's about the systematic stripping away of sovereignty orchestrated by those who benefit from keeping Mali weak. To truly solve this crisis, the focus must shift from internal blame to dismantling the neocolonial systems that have kept the country in perpetual conflict. Only then can Mali rebuild itself as a truly independent nation, free from the hidden hands that have controlled its fate for far too long. Thank you for joining us on Africa Info Hub channel. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this analysis insightful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Stay tuned for more in-depth coverage on the geopolitical shifts shaping Africa and the world. Thanks for watching.